The meaning of two personalities is like the contact of two chemical substances. If there is a reaction, both are transformed. Today, we will be sharing some of the most impactful quotes from legendary psychologist Carl Jung, who set off humanity in an alchemical search for individuation and self-transcendence. Yes. And joined with me today is none other than Leon Sao. Leon Sao is a wonderful man and the perfect representative of the INFP personality type. He is one of the wisest people that I know. And his messages and ideas always deeply resonate with and impact me, triggering profound reflection and personal growth. Leon is a psychotherapist specialized on Carl Jung and on neurodivergence. Um, yeah, Leon. Uh, what is the thing that you find most inspiring about Carl Jung and how would you uh, describe Carl Jung as a person? Yeah, well, first of all, I'm really happy to be on your show. I would say that you two have been <clears throat> very influential on me. I always like very excited about all the ideas that you come up with. And I, I look forward to everything that you are, are working on. So, uh, yeah, Carl Jung, um, I think... He personally very much transformed uh, my life and how I saw things. I feel like he takes everything to a much, much, much deeper level. How he um, how he sees the world, how he understands psychology. I, I think he has created a very powerful tool or many tools for personal growth. It's not like at a superficial level, right? It's really getting to the root of things, getting to the root of understanding, self-understanding, understanding about how the universe works. And so that's that's how I really resonate with his work. Now, I asked you to bring some of your favorite quotes from Carl Jung, and I also brought some of mine. And I was curious, uh, uh, what's your first quote that you came up with or thought of from well, Carl this, Jung? Yeah, this one, um, and... This one I brought because I feel like this is something that you would relate to as a YouTuber and also because we've done collaborations together. The meaning of two personalities is like the contact of two chemical substances. If there is a reaction, both are transformed. So I think um, something that he has taught me and also uh, Nietzsche has taught me is that it's good to surround yourself with people who are very different. So I think like um, in this day and age that we only want to listen to people who share similar beliefs. We are much siloed in the way that we think. Um, this is the way social media promotes things, right? But I, I like the idea of actively seeking people that even could rub you the wrong way or could have uh, disagreements. I mean, you don't at all rub me the wrong way, but we definitely have disagreements, right? About like, for, for instance, about um, artificial intelligence. But I think that's like, that's where real transformation comes from. And I think people are like afraid of that. People are like, oh no, you should just um, stick with your own kind, like politically mm -hmm. or or any, you know, any line uh, lines of discussion. But I feel like inside people feel empty because they underneath the sense of one dimensionality to it. Um, their self senses a one dimensionality to that kind of way of going about the world. And you need to have people who are very different for you to really like transform how you look and how other people look at things too, because everyone's going to bring in their own individual strengths. Absolutely. I think Carl Jung would have a lot to say about how we talk with each other online today and the modern culture that's formed. And he spoke a lot about if something irritates you about somebody, that's a sign for something for you to reflect on in yourself, right? And I really like this quote that you shared. Uh, uh, it's one that I think of a lot as well. And I also find to myself liking quite a lot uh, because it is something uh, I see, um, you know, uh, I see the people and humanity as this global collective learning experiment where we are all exploring the world through our own unique consciousness and our own unique way of seeing things. And because we're all different, we can all uncover insights and ideas that nobody else could see and so right. everybody can teach us something and so uh, in that sense right. if we are able to talk with each other we can maximize our learning and the growth as people yeah i i agree with that and i think uh, you'll start to see like there is an order to the universe is order to think how things work because when you start to really work with people who are different you really see that they lead with different strengths uh, they see in a world in a completely different way 
they go about the world in a completely different way as you. And you're no longer what we say in uh, Chinese, like you're no longer that frog at the bottom of the well thinking you're the king, king of the universe. And you, um, you, you see people like really, they look at things different and they succeed differently from you. And through that stress and, you know, there's of working with people, like through through conflict, through difficulty, uh, there's uh, mutual transformation. I, I like uh, the example of Carl Jung working with um, this this physicist uh, Pauli, and they're they're different people. But uh, he's a he's a physicist, and Carl Jung is a psychotherapist, and they came up with the uh, work together on theory of synchronicity. And um, you know, Pauli thought, oh, this you know, it's really bad to work on something that seems so like. Uh, like overly metaphysical as a, as a physicist is like he's, the scientist, other scientists would, uh, would, would dismiss him, but he's able to reach across disciplines and work with somebody else, uh, from a different discipline to come up with something that is profound. Yeah, that's absolutely right. I think when it comes to synchronicity, one quote that I thought of today was until you make the unconscious conscious, it will direct your life and you will call it faith. And I feel like with the concept of synchronicity from Carl Jung, he kind of really highlights that ability to use your unconscious and to pay attention to possibilities and patterns that appear around you and to recognize that whenever there's something that seems like it could be a coincidence or it could be like something, uh, it's really worth paying attention to that because your attention noticed that for a reason, right? Um, they had started thinking about it and started wondering about it for a reason so often when we study these things we have this opportunity to learn something about what we want and where we're headed in life and to get a sense of our future right excellent um something that i relate with that is the idea of Carl young mentioning this um intellection is a common cover-up for fear of direct experience so uh let me get back to so i could see you um I, I really like that quote. I think it's related to what you say there because um, not everything, you can't go around the world um, completely rational or detached from ex experience. You're going to move through life as if it's through molasses, very, very, very slowly. You don't feel like you're getting anywhere. But you really trust your gut and instinct and kind of go for things that seem to uh, come to you. And then, um, and just like trust that process and let go of the outcome and you'll, you'll be on your way. That's absolutely right. Now, Carl Jung uh, was uh, quite famous for his ideas on psychological types, right? So one quote mm -hmm. uh, that uh, I thought of that really highlighted that uh, in a sense is uh, sensation tells us a thing is. Thinking yeah. tells us what this is, what it is that this thing is. And feeling yeah. tells us what this thing is to us. Right. So in a sense, what he was talking about is really how we need to work towards this integrated wisdom of like learning to see uh, not just the theory of something, but also what it is in reality and to go out and experience it in reality, but also to go inside and to reflect on what it is that you experienced. Right. To be able to both understand why things are the way that they are, but also to understand how does the world relate to me and what is it I as an individual can do and with this and how do I want to relate to this, that thing that's experiencing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I, and I, what I like it is that even though his work is profound, it really comes down to these very basics of, of just uh, understanding how what things are and also what how they relate to us. And everyone, if you look at his system of the, the Myers-Briggs, I mean, he didn't create the Myers-Briggs, but his system that led to the Myers-Briggs is that everyone has a certain tendency and then um, it's their strength, it's their weakness, and it's good to find some sort of balance. And so if you're a feeling type like me, you always see how things relate to yourself um, or like how, what, what are the relationships between things and, they, and what is personal to human, humankind. And that could be overdone. I could be taking things uh, personally. But on the other hand, it makes sense to try, try to relate things to yourself and um, it, because that's you being able to place value on what is worthwhile, what's not worthwhile. To exactly. Pursue. It's pinpointing also our blind spots, but also reminding us of our strengths. And so seeing that, yeah, of course, I should try to be who I am. The, uh, 
be the best version of myself while also trying to remain aware that I don't fall into holes or like over excessively engage in something and forget about the other side of something. Right. So yeah. I, I think that the whole entire thinking, feeling, sensing, intuition, it's, it's when you understand it, the idea of balance, it's like the, it's like a really big cure, right? Because we, uh, we might have thoughts about like, say that you're an intuiting type and you think about how things could be or would be and you think you're like psychotic and you think that uh you know you you start seeing things and you start to you see too much and then uh, so you start to dismiss your own tendencies and believe in the world of sensing and then but that's not even true either and things are not just simply as they appear right it's it, there's a balance in between so it's how do you how do you, if you find that balance you're going to be able to hone your ability in intuition well and also sensing as well yeah often i see this like question mark when it comes to you know should we use uh, uh labels and how should we relate to ourselves and things like that and uh, i know there's one quote from young which is like the important thing is to follow nature and the tiger should try to be a good tiger a tree should try to be a good tree and so people should be people to know what people are, one must follow nature, go alone, you know, admit the importance of the unexpected, recognize that nothing is impossible, uh, nothing is possible without love. For love puts us in the mood to risk everything, not to withhold important elements. So there's this like, uh, we should try to see ourselves for what we are, and we should try to be our best version of ourselves. We shouldn't try to be somebody else, right? Yeah. But also, yeah. we should love other people and try to risk everything for a uh, feeling of love and for this uh, desire for connection and community and to yeah. achieve something in life. So yeah, this ironically, is like, uh, yeah. ironically, when we stepped into um, that mode of looking at the world, things come easy. Um, like just being able to trust our own nature. And maybe it takes a while to learn what that is through experience. But like once you get it, it's it's actually easiest thing. It's, it's the, the path of least resistance. And the same thing with uh, loving others. Um, there's that, or being focused on ser uh, service. So there's brain research that's done that showed that there's a brain, part of the brain, which is focused on uh, the self, on the ego. And people who are depressed, this part of the brain just like lights up very strongly. Mm. But those who are not, they're, they're very focused on others. So uh, <clears throat> it really comes down to like this ancient Indian wisdom where uh, you bring the, the self is really the combination of who you are at your best and, and how you serve others. And that, that becomes your duty. So there's that big philosophical debate about whether to follow the collective or whether to be the individual. But both paths could be egotistic because if you're so obsessed with how other people look at you and going along with the collective, that could actually become come from a place of ego because you're being self-conscious, you're being worried about how other people look at you rather than doing the thing that you feel like it's right. And then uh, same thing with individualism too. But like the self is really something that transcends collectivism and egotism. It's it's you at your best serving others. This kind of reminds me like what you've talked about, reminds me of this quote that I also selected. I would just paraphrase the quote. So the quote is that, he says, you can learn all the techniques, you can learn uh, all the, the theories, but when you touch a human soul, uh, be human, be human and use your heart. And I find this to be so true. And he's not dismissing theories and techniques. It's that, yeah. it's, and I find this through my own experience is that like when I use techniques and theories to try to uh, do things, it feels like it's, it's very, very hard. Like I'm, I have to work very hard to make things happen. But mm -hmm. when it, when you just uh, like, if you try to like interact with people based on their personality type or based on like, what's the best approach? Like for instance, like um, how to win friends and influence people. Like when you use like those techniques, right? Um, yeah. Like, I mean, they, they work, but it's, it's at one level, but when everything is like really coming from the heart and you're just connecting, um, it just seems like all the, like every technique and theory just flows smoothly when you don't put, you don't put that at the forefront. You put the you put the human at the forefront. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And it was actually that quote that made you me message you when you posted that. I was like, you know, yeah. okay, yeah, this is the perfect uh, thing to talk about together. Um, yeah. Regarding what you just shared, really, I agree wholeheartedly that Carl Jung, you know, he while he created many labels and many concepts and many terms and theories, what was so impressive about him was how he had really transcended all of that in the end of his work and how he while he had these things ultimately he dealt with people as a pe person as a human being and 
that's the only way you can teach anyone anything. We can't come to people and give them a package and, you know, like a, a map and say, oh, if you do this, everything will be great. You have to sit down and ask questions and listen and take that open-ended process. And while you can know the theory in the back of your head, like ultimately uh, what you have to do is just learn to listen attentively and to be aware of what the other person says and shares and to think of yeah. the right question to ask to help them in that process. Right. And it could be as simple as that. So a lot of uh, people think, and I think this is just a human tendency, like when we're coming from a place of lack, um, we might think the, like, in order to grow, we have to be like very, very sophisticated, like intellectually sophisticated. But uh, but really, the most sophisticated thing that we can do, or not sophisticated, but the profound thing that we could do, is something that simple, is to really um, have a heart to heart and to treat people just as humans. And from that experience uh, comes the most beautiful types of experiences ever. Like there's there's no agenda, there's nothing behind it. Like it's just uh, like really a heart to heart. And I think uh, hopefully this is where we're going, the direction that we're going towards in terms of like uh, transformation of consciousness of the world that we'll, we'll be able to rediscover this. Yeah, it's a funny thought. Why do we even have labels to begin with? But I see the interplay and the use of them and how they fit together with the informal, more open in that experience and a more spiritual experience of life. And I see how these two things often seem to go fit together on a pendulum almost. Like uh, yeah. you can study all these theories and you can benefit greatly from reflecting on in what way you feel introverted and extroverted and in which way you relate to introverted intuition and how you use that in your day-to-day -day life. But ultimately you have to just pay attention to what it is that you experience. And when Carl Jung says, you know, uh, be a good tree in a sense, he doesn't mean be a good INFP. He means be a good Leon Sao, right? In a sense of like, mm -hmm. just yeah. be the, your best version of yourself. And there's only one of you. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think that's well, that's well said. Um, let's see what else I have. Um, yeah. W where wisdom reigns, there's no conflict between thinking and feeling. I was just going to share that one. Yeah. <laughs> it's the yeah. perfect example of integration, right? Yeah, it is. I like the idea of wisdom, right? Because I think, um, so thinking thinking types might think um, um, hyper-intellectualism is like, a, is wisdom. And a feeling type may think uh, a completely feeling world is, is, is that of wisdom. It's, yeah. it's really the combination of, of both. I also like this idea of one thing furthers the other that, if you're thinking a thinking type, but if you integrate feeling, it actually makes your thinking deeper and more than if it was without the feeling. And, and so that's also the other way around, too. That's absolutely the same thing I see. You know, I was reading Daniel Kahneman's uh, Thinking Fast and Slow a uh, year ago or so. And I found myself thinking about how, you know, he creates this dichotomy of the default mode network, uh, system one and system two, and the task positive network, where we have this informal, more feeling, more like gut based kind of reasoning of the world and we have this more slow and more complex and more theoretical form of reasoning about the world that in many ways sounds a lot more like thinking right, uh, right. and uh, the thing that I thought and uh, when I was reading that is you know the better the, the more you know uh, the greater the capacity of your gut to make fast judgments right so like by gaining this kind of experience of like studying learning things and uh, figuring things out. You have this mm -hmm. capacity to, if you use it, uh, to really understand and see things also with your heart. So there's this uh, double-endedness of like, often we, mm -hmm. we might have one preference, which is that we might prefer one over the other. But if we make strides in one, that will always translate to, if we are able to face it, also advancements on the other side. Yes. Um, and Carl Jung also speaks about integrating the, sh the shadow too. So, and, and how that's related to that is, um, regardless, you're always going to have two sides of yourself. You're always going to have the thinking and feeling side. And if you suppress one side, it's going to show up in another way, often in a childish way. I remember going to, um, there's a, there's this, uh, meetup with scientists, uh, and need these middle-aged men. And, um, they're like very, very into science. They're into the world of rationality and really hate feeling or and then they really don't like uh, spirituality or anything like that but they almost they almost seem like children like in terms of how they interact with one another in terms of um how they engage in the, in the feeling world like they're they're almost uh, childish in, in that regards like uh they, they get like um 
hyper competitive or they get very possessive of their ideas. Like, this, this is my idea. This is not your idea. So it's feeling expressed, but in an in, in infantile way. Mm. Yeah, I mean, often when I think of the problem of thinking, often it was already something I think the ancient Greeks already recognized because they were arguing, you know, why do we need politics? Why do we need therapy? Why do we need the, all these like softer aspects of life that are so vague and muddly? And they said, you know, it's because the thinking way, you know, the hard sciences, they're too slow. Like, yes, potentially, theoretically, you could mathematically calculate the answer to any question, but it would take such a long time that uh, eventually, like, you wouldn't even be able to make decisions in the real life as things were happening in the here and now. And so feeling right. is so much more applied, right? So often when it comes down to uh, what you, the choices you have to make in your day-to-day -day lives about, should I date that person or that person? Should I get that job or this job? Would I be happier living in this city or that city? That's where feeling is needed, right? To make those kind of apply judgments on, you know, your gut, love, that this is a good person. This is a, this is a, the person I want to talk to. This is where I want to go. This is what I want to see. This is what I want to feel, right? Mm -hmm. Right. I think, yeah, you're on point there. Actually, it makes me think about artificial and intelligence i think you know there, there, there's a positive and negative side but like the the shadow side of artificial intelligence is this idea the subconscious desire for for people to to want to have everything calculated and laid out for them you just want some machine to just like know what to do and because you don't really trust yourself and um and also this idea of um not wanting to deal with people like soul to soul like what if i i could come up with uh, words that are perfectly calculated to connect with the other person, right? So that's mm. the very lopsided thinking approach if it's done, you know, completely one way. Yeah. And the answer, of course, is that there is not just one way to do it. There are so many things you could say in any given time with any given person. There is uh, the thing with uh, using science to use these kind of ways or AI is that it will give you a standardized general, like straight answer and it won't I give you the nuance of what do I want to talk about, right? Because you want to have a good conversation with another person. You want to have a good time having a chat, getting to know somebody else. If you use AI, you're not going to get that good time. <laughs> you know, you're not going to have the ability to share what's really important to you. And if you want to talk about what's really important to you, you're going to have to check in with yourself and think, what is it I want to talk about? What is it I want to say? What is it I want to ask about? What is it I want to right. know more about? Yeah, it's like being able to turn in internally into the into what are the intangibles and some people say like oh, I'll, I'll be able to get there but with the help of ai but it, it could uh, potentially be a very strong crutch like really coming from a place of fear fear of being able to turn inward and really express yeah. and develop what's internal and intangible. Yeah, and I feel like this is something that Carl Jung would also uh, be quite critical of in modern day society. This general idea that there's a right way to do things, right? There's, there's one, one best, one size fits all solution that we could apply in any situation and it would fix every problem and it would be the optimal way to live. I think so many of us are tempted to want to live our lives in the most efficient, effective way possible, you know, answering every question the exact right way, you know, given the uh, perfect answer, uh, being the perfect person in any given situation. But it's much better to be a bit of a square peg and <laughs> to have the, this ability to kind of sometimes bounce off the edges of the world and to sometimes create these uncomfortable situations of, you know, uh, sometimes saying the wrong thing, sometimes, uh, you know, experimenting with a piece of art that won't be the most beautiful looking ever. Sometimes to, you know, write the piece yeah. that isn't going to be the most great text ever because it's going to be your text. And yeah, All right. We're missing that. Yeah. So Carl Jung very much emphasizes the internal development, like the, the world that you can't see, the unconscious. And because I, right now we live in a time where everything's like very concrete and about speed and about speed and, and the numbers, like everything is external. So we believe progress is all something that's, ex, you know, very externally manifests in a, in a rapid kind of way. Mm. So, um, yeah. yeah. Now, one quote I was thinking about was, one does not become enlightened by imagining figures of light, but by making the darkness conscious. So 
stretching inside yourself and trying to avoid, you know, these, uh, you know, this tendency to walk in circles. I think humans have this natural tendency to walk in circles because we tend to have a natural tendency. We're either left-handed or right-handed, right? Similarly, we can be, uh, have a preference in a personality in a certain way of looking at the world. And I think often when we are in this state, we can often hyper-focus on, you know, these things that uh, this, this story uh, with this general script and these general ideas of what we're working towards, where we're headed, where we're going. And we're often thinking about these things, but we're not thinking about, you know, the shadow of it all, you know, why do I want to go there in the first place? You know, when, what made me want to go there and what brought me this uh, to this point, right? And to allow yourself to ask yourself these kind of uncomfortable questions can be a deep source of uh, hidden motivation and a deeper, more truer sense of self. Yeah, we want to see progress to go in a in a straight line. And something that Carl Jung says is that progress is almost like a, a snake. It kind of winds, winds to and uh, fro. Like, oh, it's almost like a roller coaster and it's going to be terrifying. It's going to be scary. At times it seems like we're really going in the wrong direction but that's what's going to help us to go into the, the right direction too and that gives me a lot of faith like in terms of taking a step back and looking at humanity as a whole like it looks like sometimes we're going into like a bad direction or or whatnot but i always like it from perspective of you know this is what's going to help us uh, down the line because sometimes we need to confront the shadow head on like really get into like a like a a, a bad direction or so-called there's no bad really bad or bad or good but like uh, unhelpful kind of direction to really experience how it's like so that we, we so that we can learn through contrast and he talks about learning through contrast that we go from one one end to the other it's kind of like what Rumi was talking about in terms of it takes two wings to fly you need to you go one way and then and go the other and that that's that's how you learn and how, that's how you experience life is not not through a straight line exactly i mean Carl Jung he always warned against this one-sided thinking or one-dimensional thinking of uh you know for example taking a dichotomy like good and bad right or good and evil yeah. and to go like you know it should always be good you know, and to always cling on to that and to feel like that's going to solve, uh, like, uh, uh, that's how life should be always, right? And right. not recognizing why things exist and that everything is a part of life and that we need the polarity of it all. And when it comes to this, I'll, I think of this politically as well, because, of course, we can see today that the world is moving in a more conservative direction. And... Uh, to some extent, you know, while I often tend to be more on the side of the progressive of thinking of new ideas and new innovations, I have to also recognize that sometimes the world will need to slow down and sometimes it can speed up. And these are natural patterns and cycles that happen and have continued to happen across the story all over. Right. So. right. I, that reminds me of a talk by uh, Jonathan Haidt around about how uh, conservatives and liberals, they happen to have different personalities. They're born with different personalities and they actually belong as part of a, a whole. Um, that uh, And so what happens is that a society winds to and fro like a, like a snake does. Uh, like if, you know, if it winds too sharply in one direction, then it snaps. And I'm not talking about like very specific policies. I'm talking about the archetypes of, you know, archetype of left and right rather than like the specific policies of it. Uh, and, and, you know, of course, the future is going to be very different from now. So you can't say like, you know, what is the middle ground right now is what makes sense, right? It's going to be everything in the future is going to be very, very different, but it, yeah. it'll take some winding back and forth uh, yeah. a, a, um, in, into um, archetypical or more than one to archetypal directions. Mm -hmm. I often think the middle ground is never really the answer in a sense. The yes. answer is the amalgamation of the both two poles, the ability to integrate both and to create wisdom, right? So yeah. you need to take the, the, the core ideas of both sides and to find ways to bring them both together yeah. without corrupting either idea, right? So without right. making it a half-half solution of both of them. Because... Yeah. Uh, Often the biggest uh, concern I have is that we gravitate towards one-sidedness where it becomes uh, unstable or threatens the stability of the human collective as a whole, where it's that uh, uh, we yeah, uh, go so far and take, uh, take an idea so far and we believe in it so much that it becomes the opposite of what we intended it to be. Uh, really, we can take any good value, any good principle that works in most situations, and it's a good principle in most situations, and we can uh, make it something bad by following it blindly and using it as a solution to every problem or as yeah. this one thing that we have to follow blindly all the time. Yeah, like anytime you, like you idealize a concept, that happens even when 
to find the middle and find that that perfect middle so so like uh, a, a form of one-sidedness too and really opposites are only opposites in our um, imaginations it's like really two concepts that we associate um, as different and the con they're really a constellation of concepts on, on each end that are just associated as being a polar to one another and in different cultures they might associate different things as being polar to one another exactly now to wrap this up a bit i wonder what is what would you say that is uh call young's message to the world today i think he always like he advocated for something that's really organic right it's really the balance of worlds the ex extroverted introverted world the feeling and thinking world uh we feel like um we have to bring things to one direction it's like right now is a time of there's a lot of polarity, so we feel like um, we don't we don't we don't talk with the other side, or we don't want to connect, right? But it's really through that there is um, there is transformation, and also to really trust in the process. So we might think this world is going such a bad or terrible direction, but I I really think it really a lot of things. If you look, take a larger view, if you look at history, it really winds to and fro and to trust in the process. But, you know, of course, take action, but not try to control things because we don't, you know, things are not within control. Just like um, there's something greater at play and we're all that we're all participating in. We, we do our part, but we could trust in the process. Absolutely. Wise words. Thank you so much for coming on and sharing your insights. And to all viewers, I want to say, really want to recommend you all to check out Leon Sao's work online and I'll link his channels uh, in the description down below and his ideas are truly original and a must for anyone who wants to better understand themselves, INFPs, neurodivergence or the rise of artificial intelligence and what we can do to protect the human creative spirit in the modern world. Mm. Thank you Eric, it's been a pleasure to be on the show.